You know, the older we get, we start thinking about how much money do I need to survive as far as when retirement comes up. So, well, what you need is a retirement survival guide. Guess what? There's one right here. Retirement survival guide. Justin Struble with Wealth Caps is with us. He is a fixer, not a broker. That's right. Good to see you. How Good are you? Good to see you again. And uh, I mean, that's true. If people start thinking about retirement um, and sometimes at an earlier age now because of cost of living's gone up. You know, how much am I going to need to retire? And these are a lot of things that you can find uh, answers to in your book. So let's talk about that a little bit uh, yeah. as far as you know, retirement income and everything. The, the biggest concern for people is retirement income. But there's a lot of mistakes people make besides just where your income's coming from. Even health care and long-term care are surprises. When mm -hmm. they, people get a couple years from retirement, they start looking at the numbers and they realize, hey, health care costs could be enormous before they get to Medicare age. Now, because I'm, I'm like six and a half years away from, uh, from <clears throat> the retirement age. Of course, I, you know, I plan on working past that, uh, that point. I feel like you know, I'm good enough, healthy enough to do that. But you, know, but you do start thinking about that. You know, I'm not that far away from it. I'm not a young thing anymore. So what am I going to need to survive, to live on? Well, it's different for everybody. But the bottom line is you got to look at it because if you retire before 65, you're going to have to go get health insurance on the open market. And the days of $150, $200 policy are gone. You're looking at 500 to 1,000 a month wow. for one person. It's a big deal. To come out of your pocket? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, it used to be 10 years ago, you could get a cheap policy where it's a couple hundred bucks. Nowadays, if you plan on retiring before 65 and your company doesn't have health and benefits for you after you retire, then you need to be budgeting for it. Cause well, well, what about Medicare? I mean, can't we depend on that? <laughs> Once you're 65, Medicare does kick in. Yeah. But you, and it is, it's a couple hundred bucks usually, but it only covers on average 63% of medical costs. I mean, you got deductibles, your insurance, your co-pays, and stuff it doesn't even cover at all. And Medicare doesn't cover Medicine. any long-term care yeah. after 100 days in the hospital. So you've got to be budgeting for that kind of thing. Realistically, in retirement, they did a study, and a 65-year-old couple should spend, on average, $250,000 on medical costs in retirement. That's a big number. That's just medical costs. And that excludes long-term care. That doesn't even figure in if you need nursing home or you have Alzheimer's and you need 20 years of care. That's just right. medical bills, heart attack, medications, deductibles, everything. And, I mean, there's probably a pretty large percentage of us that's going to need long-term care once we hit 65. Yeah, the, the number is 70% of 65-year-olds will need some sort of long-term care. That may be one month of end-of-life care. It may be 20 years with Alzheimer's or dementia. Mm -hmm. But 70% need that kind of care. And 20% of those that need care need more than five years. So... We're much better today than 30 years ago of keeping people alive. Hopefully the quality of life is better as well, but the reality is you could easily see yourself with five years, 10 years of, of um, supportive life, mm -hmm. home health care, long-term care, somewhere where you need a little assistance, maybe a couple hours a day, <coughs> and maybe round-the-clock care. Right. So, okay, bottom line, how do we pay for this? How do we pay for this? We need long-term care to pay for How do we pay for this? Well, when you run out of money, Medicaid will pay. Okay. You lose some options, you get whatever they pay for, mm -hmm. but they will pay. So it's not like you're just going to die there. <laughs> you're going to get taken care of. Uh, but planning ahead allows you to give yourself choices. Whether you, there's, there's four ways to pay for like long-term care. Okay. You can self-insure. That means, say, you've got an extra million or two that you just hadn't planned on income. It's oh, not yeah, your travel I carry, budget. I carry that around in my back pocket all the time. <laughs> but that's the, that's the magnitude that you need just, just in case. I mean, 20, I mean, the average long-term care facility is 80 plus a year, yeah. 80,000 a year. Right. It'll wipe through 400 grand in five years. Wow. It, it'll wipe you out. So realistically, if you've got a large chunk you can set aside and say, that's, that's my, my insurance policy, great. If you don't, there's traditional long-term care policies, okay. which is monthly pay. You pay each month, and you've got a benefit if you need it. The problem with that is it's like homeowners or car insurance. If you never have a claim, it's money down the drain. So that 500 bucks a month might be for nothing. 
So it's frustrating for a lot of people to say, we're just going to take that, pay that just in case. Right. Uh, the other way is a life with long-term care policy where they combine, say you want long-term care coverage, but if, it doesn't, if you don't use it for long-term care, you'll get a death benefit. That way you're at least paying for something. Right. So if you don't end up using that two or 300 grand towards long-term care, it's 200, 300 grand to your spouse tax-free. The fourth way to pay for long-term care, which is common in the last five or 10 years, is an asset-based policy. Whether it's a life insurance or whether it's an annuity, there's ways to use assets. Instead of having a million dollars sit on the side, you may be able to put 50 or 100 grand on the side and give you two, three, four, five times that amount towards long-term care, home health care, or even even a death benefit. Now, how, how to understand, you know, how, how I mean, how, what can people do to, as far as uh, incorporating one of these plans into their, you know, um, into you, their life, into the retirement? You've got to take a big picture approach. I mean, it's easy enough to say, hey, here's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Mm -hmm. Everyone should do this. But the bottom line is you need that big picture approach to say, okay, we got income we've got health issues, we've got long-term care, we've got all these variables going on. You need that financial plan, that retirement plan, which is much bigger than just managing your investments. That's just a little piece of a financial plan. Now, you've got this book here, <coughs> Retirement Vault. That's uh, right. Tell us about the, <coughs> excuse me, tell us about this real quick. Protect your investment and provide predictable lifetime income. Yeah. My job, I consider myself a conservative financial planner. So I wrote this book to outline conservative ways that people can plan for their retirement where you're not risking it all. And you're really, if you read it, you're gonna get your eyes open to something. There's right. a lot of concepts in there on how to protect it, how to maximize your income, reduce costs. And frankly, that's why I even wrote the Retirement Survival Guide. Yeah. It's a, it's a Retirement Survival Guide is a story about a couple that retired 10 years ago. And it goes through the past 10 years on how their life changed, how their perspective on life changed where they were 63 and retired, and they weren't even thinking about long-term care until things started happening. They realized, the wife realized, hey, I could live another 20 years and he could be gone and our income changes, our tax rates change, and I still need to be protected and I don't want to be dependent on the kids. Yeah, real quick, 30 seconds left. How did they get a copy of this? Go to our website, give our office a call. We'll send them a copy in the mail. No charge? No charge, oh, that's free awesome. of cost. Okay, Justin Struble with Wealth Caps here on the Gulf Coast. Uh, as we says, he's a fixer, not a broker. So right. if you definitely uh, need some fixing, your uh, income, your retirement, whatever, needs some help, give him a call. See what kind of options that you do have so you can live out those golden years comfortably without any worries. Give him a call at Wealth Caps.